While we're here in Paris, I caught up with the president of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde. We all know her from her role in global finance, but she's got a fascinating history as a competitive artistic swimmer, which is in part why she's here at this year's Olympics. I'm here because I was invited. The president of the International Olympic Committee, um, Thomas Bach, um, said to me, you are an athlete. And I said, well, not anymore, but I was. I said, well, you have to come because the games will be amazing. And uh, I really would like you as a former athlete to be there with us to celebrate the Olympic spirit and, uh, and the achievements of, uh, of the athletes. So that's why I am here. Uh, for those who don't know, you are a, a, a former artistic swimmer, uh -huh. a synchronized swimmer. Yep. Uh, tell people a little bit about that. How did you get started? What first got you into a pool and when? That was back in 67. So I started practicing because my friends were doing it as well. And then came 68. In 68, you had all these rioting and mess um, everywhere. My parents at that point said, you can go to the swimming pool as much as you want. Hang out at the club, but just stay there. <laughs> so that was the deal. <laughs> you know, no, no messing around in the streets of my hometown. So I went to the swimming pool every day and I was practicing and swimming and practicing with my, my friends. And, you know, you get better and better simply because you work harder and harder. That's how I got really started. And then competition came along. And, and, and fortunately, it was never in my days an Olympic sport. It, I did European championship. I did major events, but never uh, the Olympics. So it's, it's, it's a beautiful moment for me to, to watch and to enjoy those young girls who are uh, swimming, synchronized swimming. I mean, there, there have been people who sometimes say that it's not really a sport. What do you oh. say to them? <laughs> I say to them, stop you and just try. <laughs> just try. Because it's a, it's a super hard sport. It's one where you have to swim really well. It's one where you have to hold your breath for, you know, I, I, still, I can still swim 50 meters underwater. Wow. Okay. But in those days, it was at least 50 meters underwater. And it's one where you have to be very, very aware of your vertical. You have to be extremely precise and you have to pay attention to details. So it brings together the techniques of an athletic sports, but also the, the details of almost ballet uh, together and a sense of music and rhythm and a sense of the team. So. Good luck to those who uh, say, oh, it's an easy sport. No, it is not. It's really and, hard. And by the way, you have to do it all while you're smiling the entire yes. time. That was something that uh, my coach used to say, mm -hmm. because it's a sport where you learn about effort, teamwork, but you also learn about something that is unfair. Because it's, it's, you, know, you have technical figures that you have to do before you do the uh, team events, and those technical figures are judged by human beings. You know, judges, they look at you, they give you a particular note depending on how well you do or how well they think that you do. And there is often an element of injustice about it because you feel that you did really well and they think that you didn't do so well. So our coach in the national team used to say, when you feel it's unfair, greet your teeth, smile and get on with it. And that's been a good lesson for me, always. How, how do you carry that forward? How, how are the lessons that you learned as a swimmer things that you can still rely on today? Like oh, grit your teeth and smile in adversity is one that I always have with me. And I, I, I recommend it to uh, my, my, my team uh, as well. You know, sense that things don't happen um, randomly. You have to work hard. You have to earn it. Um, the fact that it, it's a team effort you're not going to succeed all by yourself, even if you are super, super good. Um, resilience, you can fail, but you have to bounce back, get back on your feet and try again. I think all that works uh, in, in real life and in, in, in your job as well. Have you ever had moments, um, you know, you've been through so many crises um, in your time as a leader here, as the IMF, as the finance minister here in France. Um, have you ever had moments where <clears throat> you have to go back on your training, whether that be grit your teeth and smile, whether that be breathing exercises, what, what, what do you kind of utilize today? Yeah, it's a very, really good question because I, I do keep these breathing habits that I have. So when I have to give a speech, when there is a moment of angst or when there is a, a moment of crisis and everybody gets a bit panicked and, and um, hyper, then 
I take it in and I, I do the, the breathing that I will not demonstrate now. I, but I kind of want to learn it. Yeah, you, 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 you essentially breathe from, from the, the bottom of... The diaphragm. Yeah, exactly, diaphragm. Then you take it in, then you hold it for a few seconds and then you let it out again. And you do, do that several times. It just calms you down. And yeah, I, I still do it. When's the last time you did it at work at a work environment? <laughs> um, I'd say I do that before any governing council meetings. <laughs> uh, any speaking engagement. Speaking engagements are the ones where you think to yourself, OK, am I going to keep the audience interested? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you have to have enough confidence and enough calm about you to, to do it. When you were a teenager, you were in Washington, too. Yeah. You yeah. swam while you were there? I was just out of the national team in France, mm -hmm. and I was excited to uh, go to the United States to live there. I was 17 at the time, but I was very disappointed that I was giving up my membership in the national team. So what happened is that my American family, um, Marion and Bill Atkins, were so good, they tried super hard in Washington, D.C. back in 73. They tried to find a synchronized swimming club, and there was one. At the, at the Rockville uh, Jewish Community Center. So we went, I, I showed what I could do, and they said, okay, we'll take you in. So I joined the team, and uh, I actually swam with the team in the US uh, National Championship. Wow. No, uh, that was cool. You had a pretty incredible year when you were there. You were also involved with helping doing some translation at a congressman's right. office, too. What happened? Well, it was... Um, I had to be an intern for a period of time at the end of my, my school year at Holton Arms. And uh, I was lucky to, uh, to work for Congressman Coyne. He then became senator and then became uh, defense secretary for President Clinton. But Bill Coyne was my, in a way, he was my first boss. And uh, he was the youngest member of the House Judiciary Committee at the time of Watergate. And I was translating into French the letters that he was sending to his constituents who on the border of Maine and Canada spoke essentially French. So that was my job for a couple of months and I, I just loved it. 